Thank you very much. So, the theme of our paper or our presentation is the language contacts in Soviet uh, linguistics. So it means uh, to speak about the history of the Soviet linguistics and main topics of the Soviet linguistics. And we, all, lang all linguists all over the world, uh, know that there are three main methods in general linguistics. This is the comparative uh, method, this is the areological and typological linguistics, and they have different objects and different factors at the same time. For example, genetic method, a object for the genetic method is kinship, and the factor, of course, it's a time. Uh, for example, Kartwellian languages, or so languages, Georgian, which is a state language, and official language of uh, our country, Migrelian, Laz, and Swan are uh, genetically uh, from the one group or, or the same group, but the name of this group is Kartvelian or South Caucasian. And uh, the kinship of the, uh, the factor for the kinship of these languages, of course, is time. So for the areological, for the areological lingu linguistics, main object is affinities. So similarities between languages and the factor for such similarities is space. For example, the languages of Caucasian region have some similarities, but not all of them are genetically uh, from the same family of, of the languages. For example, Armenian language, uh, which is spread in uh, Caucasian area, is not Caucasian language but it, it has some similarities with the South and, um, uh, and other Caucasian languages. And the third method, uh, the main method, of course, linguistic has different methodologies, but the, one of the main method, typological method, and the object of this method is isomorphisms with the different languages, for example, Georgian, French, and one of the language of Uganda, for example, Swahili, and so on. And the factor, not time and not space for this, uh, for this method. But <clears throat> what does it mean, similarity? Similarity has the languages which are uh, from the same genetic uh, group, and the similarity ha have the languages which are from the different uh, uh, language groups. For example, <clears throat> Kinship means that we have the same language families, and this is a, a factor, sorry, a result of the divergence. And affinity means that uh, this is a language union or Sprach, uh, Sprach, uh, Sprach Buch, uh, as it was uh, used in 19th century, and this is a result of, of the convergence. At the beginning of the 20th century, the neo Italian neolinguistics uh, unfortunately had very bad influence on the linguistic thought, and the linguists all over the world uh, sought how to change the method of the, of the linguistics. It was in uh, Soviet Union, in France, in uh, United States, and so on. So we have different um, heroes of our speech. First of all, this is Nikolai Trubetskoy, who is a famous uh, linguist from Prague Linguistic School. Uh, and here is the Prague Linguistic School itself. You can see Roman Jacobson, maybe you recognize him, and uh, uh, Nikolai Trubetskoy, Karczewski, for example, and others who, uh, this is the photo from 1930, this, this was, a, was the first uh, international phonology conference in Prague. It was the beginning of phonology as a field of linguistics. Not phonetics, but phonology. Um, and they had very interesting <coughs> periodical, Evrazijski, Rimenik, uh, Rimenik, which means um, annual, or quarterly of um, Eurasian theory, and uh, one of the main articles was written by uh, 
Trubitskoy, Babylon Tower and the fusion of languages. Babylonskaya Bashne is mission years ago, so fusion of languages was uh, firstly used not only in Soviet Union, but outside the Soviet Union in Prague linguistic circle. And uh, here is excerpt from the from this uh, paper of Trubetskoy, the Bible, uh, Babel Tower and Confusion of Languages, that some languages on the same geographical and cultural historical area has some similarities, and uh, it's not caused by the general origin, but only a long neighborhood and parallel development. And I used as example Armenian language, which has some similarity with South Caucasian and North Caucasian languages, and the reason of the similarities is this is a long neighborhood and parallel development of these languages. Uh, so please see on this <coughs> uh, picture. Uh, this is um, uh, this picture shows that uh, proto language is the beginning of the. Uh, languages of, uh, of the same uh, genetical language groups, but sometimes the uh, geography influence on the languages too. For example, if we, if we think that A is a proto-Indo-European language, uh, A1 is Armenian, for example, which is Indo-European language itself, and A3, it's, uh, for example, Indo-Iranian languages is uh, Ossetic or Kurdish or uh, different Iranian uh, dialects of uh, Indo-Iranian languages. And uh, these languages have some similarities and we see the similarities in Georgian language, which not Indo-European and not Indo-Iranian languages, the South, uh, South Caucasian language. By the, uh, by the way, uh, the beginner of the historical comparative linguistics, Franz Bob um, had made a um, mistake. He thought that Georgian was Indo-European language because he find many similarities. So not similarities, but borrowed words uh, from Iranian, different Iranian languages into Georgian. And he thought that it was Indo-Iranian too. So the second hero, of our paper is Nikolai Mar, who was a prominent Soviet linguist and had very interesting, but very utopian linguistic theory, geophetic theory. He, he is with the, his family on this picture, his two sons and uh, wife. One of his sons, Yuri Mar, was a professor of Tbilisi State University. He founded the faculty of uh, Mm, Iranian languages, and unfortunately, he would die, was died after the father's death in 1935. So, uh, Nikolai Mar theory is based not on the comparative, in, uh, historical comparative methodology and not the uh, um, areology, but uh, different uh, periods uh, development of languages. And here is his paradigm that languages of the primary period systems are, for example, monosyllabic and polysemantic languages, as Chinese, for example. Languages of the secondary period is Finno Ugarit, Turkic, and Mongolian languages. Languages of the third uh, period are uh, Japhetic languages, as Georgian. And the most um, development languages are Indo-European languages. This is the fourth stage of the development of languages. So Georgian is not uh, very uh, developed by the, from the point of view of uh, uh, Nikolai Mar because he is on the, it is on the third stage. And the Chinese, for example, is undeveloped language because it's on the first stage. So uh, you can see you can imagine the mistakes of this theory, theory and the results of the theory when it was the um, only one Soviet linguistic theory period of Stalin during 30 years. 
And what was the main idea of this theory? That in the Mediterranean world, there was only Japhetic, Japhetic uh, nation or people who governed on the Indo-European, and there was a fusion uh, and remodeling of the European world culture. And this remodeling was based on the, the uh, Japhetic language. And which is the Japhet Japhetic languages? Well, first of all, it's a uh, Georgian. It's uh, Basque. Nikolai Mar was in uh, Pyrenees, and he wrote very interesting uh, paper. Uh, Pyrenees Guria, which means Guria of Pyrenees. Guria is a part of from the Western Georgian, and he finds some similarities between Guria. Uh, western part of Georgia and between uh, Pyrenees in Italy. This is our hero, Stalin, which liked Nikolai Mar's theory very much. And they had some meetings, and they talked about this theory, by the way. Uh, this picture is from Gori. You know that in Gori we have House Museum of Stalin, but it's not a picture, so it's a picture of carpet. Carpet. Uh, very interesting conversation, but it's very ut utopian, utopian painting itself because Stalin and uh, Lenin never met each other in this age. So, what was the language uh, planning of uh, Stalin's period? Uh, Stalin initiated a policy of the bringing closer uh, the nations and their languages, and he used the term uh, fusion of languages. In Russian, it's sliani. Uh, he used not only sliani, but um, other um, uh, Russian terms too, but all of them we can translate in English as a fusion of uh, languages. And the process of the bringing the languages closer uh, would be very uh, long way. And the spligenie, it's the same, not fusion, but uh, to be closer and closer to each other, uh, 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 other is the way it will possible. It will possible after the world, uh, socialist world war, war uh, after the uh, socialism will be victory all over the world, when the national uh, oppression, nationalism, and had been done away, and the separation and distrust would be replaced by trust. So you can see this is very utopian uh, understanding of the future of the mankind, and the main for the linguist is that uh, Stalin thought that We have a wonderful guest. I think Stalin liked dogs too. Uh, please, you are welcome. I'm sorry, it's not oh, my no. fault. <laughs> Thank you. So now the dog will know more about Stalin, <laughs> more knowledge than it had a minute ago. So why is it, is the, is it utopian theory? Because uh, Stalin thought, I don't know what he thought for himself, but in, in these words we see that he thinks that no separation, no nationalism will be in future and uh, the whole mankind will um, speak on one language and they will love each other and the separation will be replaced by trust and so on. Uh, so, uh, why is this long way? Because uh, we need very um, huge time uh, for the new language, which will be not Russian, not English, not, not any other languages, but uh, new language which will be included, please pay attention, the best elements of the national and zonal languages. So if you are linguists, you know that 
there is no best elements of languages. All languages are best. All languages are very good, and all languages are equal in front of God and in front of linguists. So what, what does it mean, the um, best elements of national and zonal languages, and how, can, how could uh, he understand under the uh, best elements? What is, for example, what is the best? Um, analytical languages, or languages as Chinese, monosyllables, and uh, polysemantic, who knows? And what knowledge had Stalin about this? Now I want to compare the statement of Stalin and Marx. So Stalin's opinion was that when the socialism will be winner on, over the world, so the neighbor national languages inevitably have to merge one common language. So this one common language will not be uh, the languages which we know now, for example, French, English, or German, it will be something new. Now please pay attention to the Nikolai Mar statement. The future of the uh, world language will be language of new system, so of new period. Uh, and uh, this language cannot be such a language. So from the living languages, what does it mean living languages? Languages which we have now in the world. It will be new. So Stalin and Mar have the same idea about the future of mankind, that they will uh, speak on one language, and this language will be the result of the fusion of the Slyanian Russian of different languages or all languages all over the world. Uh, as I told you, Mar and Stalin met several times, and one of meetings was during the 16th Congress of Communist Party. It happened in 1930. So in Soviet uh, period, if you, if you have any knowledge about the Soviet Union and about the uh, understanding of uh, class system and in Soviet Union, so they wanted to underline uh, that uh, class of workers class of peasants and intelligentsia have the same ideas, have the same thoughts and understanding of um, future. And this is uh, the excerpt from the, when Mar had a, a speech during the Congress of, Com in the 17th Congress of Communist Party in 1930. And uh, not only Mar, but there was another guest too, academician Professor Keller. And what is the uh, important that they have the same ideas, um, and the delegates of the Congress applaud the science. So scientists, it is intelligence here with writers, painters, and so on. Uh, class of workers and class of peasants have the same ideas, and as we know, unfortunately we have no, uh, no inscription about this, as we know the um, last part of his speech Mar uh, had made in Georgian language to influence on Stalin, on Stalin, and I think it's true because Mar was very egocentric uh, person, and I can imagine his speech in in, uh, in Georgian or the Russian Congress of Communist Party. But so suddenly, up suddenly, after the death of Nikolai Mar, Stalin changed his uh, mind about the languages of, uh, language of uh, um, um, mankind, about the language future of the world, and about the class structure of the language. This is the book which is written in Georgian by Kandi Charquiani. Charquiani was the leader of Georgian Communist Party, and he had some relationship, maybe some friendly relationship, with Georgian. Um, uh, this is uh, the name, uh, the title of the book, Meetings with Stalin. And the author of this book is Kandi Charquiani, and he was published by the son of Kandi Charquiani, Gela uh, Charquiani. 
Uh, Arnold Chikobawa and um, Georgian, maybe you know this name because Arnold Chikobawa met with Stalin and he had some influence on Stalin's understanding of linguistics. Arnold Chikobawa and Gandhi Charquiani, they we are not friends, but, but they have some relationship with, with uh, each other and Arnold Chikobawa never never um, trusts, uh, never liked Nikolai Mars' theory. He was always against his theory. And uh, his books, which is printed uh, before 1934, show that um, he has different understanding of languages. I found uh, this case in the former Communist Party archive in the Ministry of Internal Affairs in Georgia. And it's written in 1949 by uh, Arnold Chikobawa. He has two different papers about uh, linguistics in Turkey, and the second is about the Nikolai Mars theory in Soviet linguistics. And uh, I understood that uh, something was uh, related, some, some his history was related to these two different papers because I found it in the division of uh, propaganda. So linguistics sometimes is a part of propaganda. And in Soviet times, of course, the linguistic was the servant of the Soviet uh, propaganda. And why propaganda uh, division? Why uh, Chikobova's paper appeared in this department? And uh, I think that um, uh, the um, answer on this question you can find on Wikipedia. Wikipedia, you know that it's uh, people's encyclopedia. It's not uh, not very scientist scientific. But if you find Soviet linguistics, linguistics here is very interesting history how Stalin changed his mind about Nikolai Mars theory. So you, you can read it at the beginning of the Stalin, it's a except from uh, Wikipedia about the Soviet linguistics. So at the beginning of the, of the Stalin's rule, the dominant figure in Soviet linguistics was Nikolai Mar, which uh, had uh, uh, two different understanding of languages. For, for, first of them is that language has class structure, and the language structure is de determined by the cultural economic structure of the society. And the se uh, second is uh, geophetic theory. Stalin, from the beginning, was on Mars side. He liked the theory, but uh, when he read the letter of Arnold Chikobawa, uh, how, can, how could he uh, read the unwritten uh, letter of Chikobawa, I don't know. I think that is that letter which I find in the uh, Department of uh, Propaganda of uh, Modern uh, Ministry of Internal uh, Affairs of Georgia, which is a department of former Soviet archives. And um, after that, he met with Chikobawa, and the, they had long talk from 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. And after this long conversation, as we see, cha uh, Stalin changed his opinion. I think this is like a fairy tale. I don't think that in uh, five or how many times, or 10 hours, uh, Stalin ha can, could change his mind on this theory. But something, some factors outside of linguistics uh, beyond the linguistics, for example, uh, the relation with China or the relationship with uh, other um, countries neighboring of Soviet Union um, make, made him to think differently about the uh, Soviet linguistics. And uh, here is a, some uh, copies of uh, a letter of, of Stalin to Nikolai Mar, and the second is a Mars letter to the to Nikola, uh, Mars letter to Stalin in 1932. After two years, he died. Uh, uh, so here is the picture of the minutes of uh, uh, Congress of the Communist Party of uh, Tbilisi State University 
and all linguists, Chikoba, Ahmediani, and others, was called bourgeois linguists, idealistic linguists, because they don't li uh, they liked comparative historical methods. They used this method during uh, their work, and they don't trust the Jafetic theory of Nikolai Mar. And you can see, for example, in 1935, this is Tbilisi Com Com uh, Committee of the Communist Party has a um, special announcement against Ahlediani and Arnold Chikobova that they are not true Soviet linguists because they still like uh, bourgeois linguistics and historical comparative methodology. But uh, in 1949, we can found um, I show I show you the book of Gandhi Charkuyani, the leader of the Georgian Communist Party, and this is a letter of Gandhi Charkuyani to Stalin. And the title of this letter is "The Situation in the uh, Field of Soviet Linguistics." And Gandhi Charkuyani did not like uh, the statements of Nikolai Mar, and he asked Stalin to change the understanding of linguistics, the ideology of the Soviet linguistics, uh, the future of the Soviet linguistics. And Stalin had made some comments on uh, this uh, paper. For example, you can see Nyet, so no, he um, did not agree with some statement. Uh, with Nikolai Mar, it's uh, very funny. So it was he was agreed 30 years ago, and now during 30 years, and now suddenly he changed his understanding. And uh, you can see ha ha ha. So Stalin is laughing on Nikolai Mar's theory, and sometimes he laughing on Charkuyani's statements too. So you can imagine the personality of. Uh, the father's father of all peoples of the world. It, uh, he was named uh, with Soviet uh, period. So, um, and there's an underline, underline the theory of Marxist Leninist position in Soviet linguistics. And the, at the end, the last paragraph, uh, you can see the uh, papers which I found in the uh, archive of the Soviet, uh, former Soviet uh, Communist Party. There are two papers of Chikobala against Turkic linguistics and Nikolai Mars theory. So we can imagine the way Gandhi uh, Cherkuyani, uh, the leader of Georgian Communist Party, asked Arnold Chikobala to write his opinion about the language classification of Nikolai Mar about the um, arguments of the language classification of Mar, and then he uh, brought this paper to Stalin. After that, Stalin and Arnold Chikobawa met with, uh, with it, each other, and Stalin told him to write a paper for newspaper Pravda to begin uh, the discussion about the Soviet situation in Soviet linguistics. And uh, here is the Charkoyanis, oh sorry, Arnold Chikobawa's uh, a short uh, paper, how it was. And he describes one of the meeting with Stalin and uh, he give, gives us information that some of statements uh, did not uh, liked by Stalin. And you can find, for example, Glupast, it's crazy, Stalin wrote uh, about Mars theory. Sometimes he likes, uh, um, uh, he has Chipuha, Chipuha means the nonsense, uh, the same understanding of Mars theory. And uh, here is, uh, I want found, that I, I want to found this one. So, Stalin worked hard. He always did comments on the different uh, papers and on the different letters 
papers of Kandicharkuyani, papers of Arnold Chikobawa, uh, books of, uh, for example, Marx and Engels, books of uh, Nikolai Mar, and so on. And sometimes uh, he has very interesting question, Akitaitsi, and what about Chinese people? If the Chinese language is monosyllabic, and uh, uh, you know this, it's monosyllabic, but it's uh, poly, uh, polysemantic. If it's polysemantic and monosyllabic uh, language, can we say that it's undeveloped language, as Mar has uh, idea? And what about China? So, uh, Chinese people. So he asked Arnold Chikobo to write at least one paragraph about Chinese language and development of Chinese people. And sometimes he did not like uh, arguments of Arnold Chikobawa. He has very interesting comment, nidastatachnai argumentatia, that means your argument is not enough. Please add some other arguments uh, uh, to your paper. And uh, after that, Stalin wrote interesting book. I, I, I want to find... Uh, the role of Marxism in linguistics. It was in 1950. This is a time when Pravda, newspaper Pravda, opened the discussion about the situation in Soviet linguistics. The first paper was by Arnold Chikobawa, and the last paper was by Stalin. And after that, he edited it, printed it, published it as an independent small book. And you can see that she changed this understanding of Marx theory. And uh, Marx had, uh, on his opinion, the, uh, according to his opinion, Marx had incorrect formula about the class character of the language. And uh, this is uh, uh, <coughs> model, as, uh, as he wrote. And uh, this is against, this is a contrary of the history of languages and peoples all over the world. And um, uh, he that did not write four element. Uh, he had very interesting, Mar had four elements which uh, he found in all uh, words uh, in all languages. This was uh, Sal, Ber, uh, Yosh, and uh, Stalin did not like this four element uh, uh, analysis. And uh, you can see the last uh, lines, how it calls. This is a teacup, fortunes, tell fortunes on the teacup. This is in Russian. So tell fortunes on the teacup, yes. And sometimes the examples from uh, Nikolai Mars uh, uh, books, uh, the understanding, uh, some uh, words, for example, Georgian mucha, oak. For him, Mu is Georgian, Ha is Chinese. And we are Georgian and Chinese can meet uh, with each other. And how these two different syllables uh, could uh, fusion in one word, nobody can understand instead of Nikolai Mar. So thank you very much for attention. This was very short uh, theory, fail, theory tale about the language context in Soviet linguistics. Thank you.